Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. We appreciate you checking it out. Today we're going to talk about a really interesting topic, something that a lot of people are probably familiar with, either using it themselves, having a loved one using it, or working in the hospital with patients who require it. And that is CPAP is the abbreviation. It stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. And today we're going to talk about what CPAP is, what it is used for, the different types of masks you can wear, the different settings, um, and how to optimize those settings. Uh, it's going to be a good discussion for both people who are interested in learning more about CPAP because they use it or a loved one use it, as well as kind of an introduction for people working in the healthcare arena, whether that be respiratory therapists, nurses, uh, physicians, trainees, PAs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So stick around. We're going to do a brief break for introduction. Don't go anywhere, though. We'll see you right back. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure. Adds up nicely, right? C-P-A-P. -P. Well, what is CPAP? CPAP is a type of respiratory support, right? It's continuous positive airway pressure um, that is delivered through a mask. This is a, a picture of a type of CPAP taken by the uh, from the Centers of Disease Control website, so obviously give them credit where credit is due. Um, and what CPAP is, it's a way to provide respiratory support for a number of different medical conditions, right? And these medical conditions typically involve the lungs or the airway. And a few of these medical conditions, just to list them out, kind of are divided into medical conditions where you'll use CPAP at home or in the outpatient setting, versus medical conditions that you could use CPAP in the hospital or in the inpatient setting. And these are distinctly different, right? Um, in the inpatient setting, you're gonna have a doctor or um, you know PA or NP or respiratory therapist or nurse that are kind of guiding the inpatient setting CPAP. Um, in the outpatient setting, you have a doctor in the office who, who put some settings on your CPAP machine and then you wear it at home yourself. And when a patient comes into the hospital who wears CPAP at home, they're going to continue that CPAP. But you can also start CPAP in the hospital for patients who don't typically wear a CPAP mask for different medical conditions. All right, some of those things. So patients with obstructive sleep apnea. This is where, you know, there's a number of different causes, but this is where when you're sleeping, you have either excess tissue or kind of enlargement of different tissue areas, um, and you get a lot of snoring where you wake up, you're short of breath, you sleep restlessly, you're snoring loudly. Um, and what the CPAP machine does is it kind of stents open those airways, which we'll talk more about. Also, obesity hypoventilation syndrome, or OHS, um, which is where you can't really get those deep enough breaths to ventilate and oxygenate. Uh, central sleep apnea, this is where you um, tend to have an abnormality in the central nervous system, leading to a type of sleep apnea, where again, you don't take those good deep breaths. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, uh, this is where you have obstruction and dilation of some of the smaller airways, typically from smoking, but not always, um, and the CPAP machine helps kind of stent those airways open. If you have heart failure, where your heart can't pump strong enough, and you can get buildup of fluid on the lungs, called pulmonary edema, the CPAP helps kind of clear that fluid out of the lungs or alveoli. All these are indications for CPAP, both in the hospital and outside the hospital. Um, but there's a number of other indications as well. These are just kind of the most common ones. So um, CPAP, respiratory support for a number of different medical conditions, both inpatient and outpatient. Well, how does it work? What exactly is it? Well, we talked about how in this 
uh, picture here, it's a mask that goes over the face. But what exactly is it doing? Why do we need it? Well, what is happening is that it's providing, as we talked about CPAP, right, continuous positive airway pressure. So if we think about what that means, it means that there is continually applied pressure to the airways, right? That's exactly what it is saying. So it's throughout the whole respiratory cycle, it's applying this continuous positive airway pressure. To best understand this though, we gotta think about, well, what is happening to the lungs and the pressure in the airways when we are not using CPAP and we're just breathing normally? And that's what we documented down here. So when we take a breath in, right? Think about it, you could even do it. What is actually happening is our diaphragm, right? So here are lungs, this is the trachea, this is air flows in here, it goes through the trachea, into the bronchi, into the alveoli, and the lungs expand. But how this happens is we actually have two big muscles at the bottom of our lungs within the thorax, right? There's the thorax, it's a contained space. And these are the, called the diaphragm. And what they do is when we take a breath in, they actually contract downwards. And by contracting downwards, they create a negative intrathoracic pressure. You could picture that, right? The thorax is a contained space. So if your diaphragms are contracting down and they're pulling down, that causes negative pressure in this contained space. And that actually causes air to flow into the lungs, right? And causes the lungs to expand. And that is what is happening when we take a breath in. The diaphragm contract, it causes negative to thoracic pressure, the air flows into the lungs and the lungs expand. When we exhale, the exact opposite happens, right? When we exhale, the diaphragms relax, so they push upwards. They create a positive pressure that then pushes on the lungs, the lungs deflate and air th flows out. All right, so that's a normal breath. Well, what can happen when we have some of these um, uh, illnesses, medical conditions that need CPAP, is this respiratory cycle is abnormal. It's unable to do what it is supposed to for a number of different reasons. And because of that, we apply CPAP, or continuous positive airway pressure. So if we think about that, what we're doing, if we hack off a piece of the lung and zoom way in, what we will see is that all these tiny airways branch off into these very small alveoli. This is a single alveolus. And what it is essentially, it's a tiny airway right here that then ends into this balloon structure, right? There's a very thin membrane balloon-like structure called the alveolus. And this is where gas exchange happens. So we have all these big airways, right? Our trachea, our bronchi, small into, they break, branch off into smaller and smaller bronchi, bronchi, bronchioles, bronchioles, and they all end in thousands of these little alveolus, alveoli. And that's where gas exchange happens. So the oxygen, flows into the alveolus, the oxygen then diffuses into blood vessels because they're lined with arteries and veins, right? So the oxygen diffuses into the blood vessels. The carbon dioxide that's into the blood vessels actually um, diffuses back into the alveolus and we, when we exhale that carbon dioxide, we exhale out. So we breathe in oxygen, the oxygen gets into the alveolus, diffuses into the bloodstream, and then carbon dioxide diffuses out of the bloodstream into the alveolus, and we exhale the carbon dioxide. So that's what's happening. What's nice about CPAP is what is occurring is we're applying constant, continuous, right? The C and CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure through a mask we place on the nose or mouth. And what that does is it keeps these airways open. Right, because what you can picture is if we're breathing in and out, right? And we said when we breathe in, there's negative pressure. When we breathe out, there's positive pressure. These are really thin walled. So what can happen is these can collapse, right? These small airways can collapse down. And instead of being this nice open alveolus, the airways might collapse down, right? So that the small airways actually close. And if it's closed, nothing can get past it, right? And then nothing can get back out. So what the CPAP machine does is it provides a pressure to this alveolus and small airway. It actually applies the pressure to the whole airways. That kind of keeps it stented open, right? Because if we have constant pressure, this alveolus can expand and contract. 
exchange gas, but because of the small amount of positive pressure being applied, it will never collapse, right? So when we're breathing in, there's still some positive pressure, keeps it that's open when we're exhaling. And when we exhale, right, we said the lungs contract down and it kind of pushes the air back out of the lungs. But instead of any of this collapsing, the positive airway pressure from the CPAP mask is stenting all this open, right? It's keeping these really thin-walled alveoli and small bronchioles, uh, small air, uh, uh, airways stented open so that they never collapse. And if they are not collapsing, then it can optimize gas exchange because if they're collapsed, they can't exchange gas. So if they are not collapsing, they're gonna be better at exchanging gas. And that is how CPAP works. I'm gonna scroll down just to kind of show you different types of CPAP masks. Actually, let's scroll up. Um, that's how it works, right? Because you're wearing this mask over your nose or it could be over the whole face, right? And that mask with this machine here, you can see the CPAP machine in the back with tubing connected up. And what it's doing, it's providing constant positive pressure right? And that constant positive pressure being applied to the airways means that this airway is stented open to assist in gas exchange. So what are the different types of CPAP masks? Well, there are a few different types, all right? And these are the three most common types. I put the little resource in here. I'll link it in the description. This is a picture from their website. So shout out to them. Here's the title, the author, the website itself. So their work, not ours. Um, but the three main types of CPAP masks are called the nasal pillow, the full face, and then just the nasal mask. And if we scroll up, this here is an example of the nasal mask. Let me erase all my scribbles. What the nasal mask does is it covers the nose, right? So if we're providing positive pressure to the airways, if we think about, I'm gonna do a little terrible drawing. What's, this is gonna be a nose, right? Here will be a mouth with lips. And these are the openings to the airway, right? The nose and the mouth. So if we're gonna provide continuous positive airway pressure to those airways into the lungs, we either have to cover the mouth, the nose, or both the nose and the mouth. And that's what these different masks do. Now, if you can think about sleeping with a mask on your face, let's say you have obstructive sleep apnea, so when you sleep, you need a CPAP mask. One covering the whole face, sometimes patients get claustrophobic. Sometimes they can't tolerate it well, they don't like it. So there are these other devices that just go into the nose. They leave the mouth free because some patients tolerate that better. And that's what these three types of masks are. So we have the nasal pillow. The nasal pillow, you can see if you look close here, there's these tiny little pillows. And this actually sticks into the nostrils, right? And then that provides the pressure through the nostrils into the airways. Now, there's nothing covering the mouth. So it's less claustrophobic, but it also is not as effective. Because you can think if you open your mouth, some of that pressure is going to be lost out of the mouth, right? If we have our mouth open and we have our nose here, our nose has the CPAP mask over it. It's pushing pressure through the airways, right? It's stenting open those airways and we want those airways to be stented open down into the lungs. Those are terrible lungs. But some of this pressure that's being pushed in through the nose down the nasal passages, some of it's going to come out of the mouth while some of it's going to go down to the lungs. Right, so this nasal pillow is much more comfortable. Patients tolerate it better, but it's not as effective as a full face mask. And that is what this next one is. This is a full face mask. So if you see the shape of it, it's this triangle shape, right? Because it covers both the nose and the mouth. It goes over the full face. And this is gonna be the most effective mask because it's providing pressure to both the nose and the mouth, both openings of the airway. Um, so there's no kind of loss of pressure, um, but it's also the most claustrophobic and the type of mask that patients don't tolerate as well. Um, so that's kind of that balance. The nasal is an in-between, right? So we talked about the nasal pillows where these prongs stick in the nose. The nasal actually goes over the whole nose. So you can picture if you had a mask with prongs that just sat in the nose, that's probably the most comfortable. Whereas a mask covering the nose, which is up here. So this is a nasal CPAP mask. See how it's covering the whole nose? Um, that's going to be a little less comfortable than the nasal pillow, typically. But also is a little bit better because it encloses the whole nose. So these are the three types of CPAP masks, the main ones. Now, there's a lot of others. There's some that just cover the mouth. There's some that cover uh, both in different ways. There's different shapes, different sizes, uh, cushioned in different ways, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, and every patient's a little different. So if you use CPEP at home and your mask isn't comfortable, definitely talk to your doc, right? Because there's different types of masks you can try. In the hospital, in the inpatient setting, when I am working, the type of mask that we use is the full face mask. Some places have nasal CPAP masks as well. We do not. We do let patients bring their own in if they would like to. But the mask we use when a patient is sick and needs CPAP, let's say they have heart failure, right? They have pulmonary edema, P edema. What that means is they have fluid on the lungs because their heart can't squeeze well enough, so fluid backs up into the lungs. And we want to stent open those lungs and clear the fluid with a CPAP mask. We use the full mask, right? Because we want that patient to get the absolute maximum benefit. Um, and these nasal masks aren't as effective. So in the inpatient setting, in the hospital setting, we tend to use the full face mask. Um, now, if a patient comes in and they have, I don't know, an infection in their foot, and they have obstructive sleep apnea and they use CPAP at home, they don't like the full face mask, they use a nasal mask at home, we'll let them bring them in and use their own nasal mask. Uh, but for acutely ill patients needing new CPAP, we use the full face mask. So CPAP settings uh, in the hospital and the um, outside of the hospital are gonna be different. So home CPAP settings, these are often set by your doctor, they're on your machine, but you typically don't adjust them. And the main thing that they're setting is the called the EPAP. This stands for the end or uh, the expiratory positive airway pressure. Um, and what this essentially is, we said CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure, right? The EPAP is just what that pressure is. It's measured in millimeters of mercury. Um, and this can be a whole range, you know, it can be anywhere from three to 20 millimeters of mercury. It can even be a little higher, although that gets into kind of crazy settings. Um, many times it's five to 10 millimeters of mercury. And this is quite literally the positive airway pressure that the CPAP machine is delivering, right? That continuous positive airway pressure. In the hospital though, there's a few other settings that we focus on. So one is the EPAP. For those that work in medicine, the EPAP, um, is similar, it's identical to the PEEP, the positive um, and expiratory pressure. Um, and this again, you can set anywhere. Uh, oh, I shouldn't say that. There are definitely restrictions, but there's a, a high degree of variability in what you can set. You know, typically people say five to 25. Uh, five is low, 25 is very, very high. I think oftentimes patients, again, end up on five to 10. It's in millimeters of mercury. Now, if someone is not oxygenating well enough, the PEEP on CPAP in the hospital is something you'll increase to try to help them oxygenate. The other thing though we're controlling on the CPAP machine in the hospital is the FiO2 or the fraction of inspired oxygen. This is the percent oxygen the CPAP machine is delivering to the patient. Right, atmospheric air, what we're all just breathing on room air is 21% oxygen. So this is typically set anywhere from 30% to 100% oxygen, 100 being the most oxygen you can obviously deliver. And this is again, something you're gonna titrate, something you're gonna change based on how well someone is oxygenating, how uh, much support they're requiring. The other thing we're gonna set on the CPAP machine in the hospital is a backup respiratory rate. This should just be a backup rate. Patients you're putting on CPAP in the hospital should be breathing spontaneously. You should not be setting this respiratory rate high to like 20 or something. A lot of times it's set from six to eight, and this is just the backup rate that will kick in if the patient stops breathing. But it's not meant to take over their respiratory rate. They should be taking spontaneous breaths on their own. This is just as a salvage backup if something were to happen. These are the three main settings, the EPAP, the FiO2, and the backup respiratory rate. There are fancier things like the eye time, ramp, um, that are outside of this introductory um, CPAP discussion, uh, but this will get you 95% of the way there, maybe even 98% of the way there for hospital settings for new CPAP. All right, so that ends our introduction to continuous positive airway pressure. Um, this is part of non-invasive ventilation, or NIV, um, and it uh, hopefully provides some information, some background, uh, kind of some introductory knowledge um, about CPAP, its uses, uh, the types of masks, the settings, and all that kind of stuff. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. We're going to come up hopefully with some follow-up videos of more intense uh, CPAP settings and those types of things. Um, certainly hit the subscribe bell button, like us, all that good stuff. We appreciate you all. Um, in any case, stay well, keep learning, and we'll see you all next time.